I'm so happy to see you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for inviting me, Lucy. Thank you. <laughs> and actually, that brings me to another subject, which I know you're also very passionate about and also really helps you with you know, managing your blood sugars, controlling the cost of your diabetes, and that's fasting. When did you find fasting? Right. I uh, came across fasting, I think, pretty much the same time as I discovered uh, this sort of ketogenic diet for, for diabetics. I came across it through one of Jason Funk's <laughs> videos, the father of, uh, of fasting, I have to say. I mean, the first time I ever heard the word autophagy was through him, through one of his videos. So I was already low carber. I'd been doing low carb for, I'm not saying keto, but just generally lower carb, probably about 40 to 50 grams uh, per day uh, for two or three years before I, I uh, sort of thought, well, I should be able to do fasting too. <laughs> uh, and again, uh, after watching all of uh, Jason Fung's videos, and he's, he talks about fasting. In fact, he has a fasting group as well on, on Facebook, which I joined just to learn more about it. And I let it just sink in and I was just doing my research. I joined every fasting group, every diabetes group, every kid keto for diabetics group on on social media i wanted to find actually type 1 diabetics who were doing fasting so i started off in every group i would try and put a post up trying to reach out to people are there any type ones out there who are doing fasting and little did i know that it was a taboo word i mean type one put type one and and fasting together was taboo i would be shunned in fact my post was uh, was removed in one group i um, i was told i couldn't post about type ones uh, fasting because that's uh, dangerous so if i posted anything like that i would be banned from the group and of course i just just voluntarily left then because there's just uh, the group doesn't serve me obviously but uh, but every group including actually i mean, I mean uh, these these groups are not managed by those doctors or professors, right? They're not managing. They're just, their fans are managing their groups. And so even in Dr. Bernstein's group, oh, Dr. Bernstein does not support uh, fasting, right? Okay, well, that, I was shushed there too. And I thought there must be someone out there who's doing, um, you know, fasting and who's type one. I just wanted to exchange ideas because I wanted to do it for autophagy purposes, not for weight loss, because I didn't have excess weight to lose. Insulin sensitivity, I knew about that. I knew that it would make you fasting, makes you insulin sensitive because obviously for a full day or two or three, your insulin levels are right down to their baseline level. So towards the end of the fast, uh, you know, you become more insulin sensitive. So I knew about all of that. I just wanted to find someone else who'd already done it or he who, who would be willing to try it with me, perhaps on the same day. Hey, that's my WhatsApp number. Let's do it together. Let's see how it goes. So let's support each other. I needed the support and yet I couldn't find it anywhere on, on, on social media. Then I found, I actually found one group where type 1 diabetics um, uh, one group for type 1 diabetics who were doing fasting. And I thought, fabulous. And I just joined the group. I thought, this, this is what I wanted. This is the group. These are the sorts of people I wanted. And all they were, po they were posting was, uh, or they seemed to be promoting orange juice fasting. I mean, there are hundreds of different ways of fasting, right? <laughs> uh, but in my mind, if you're doing, if you drink, if you're drinking orange juice during your fast, well, orange juice is pure sugar, right? So if you're drinking orange juice, then you are going to need to take bolus insulin, uh, insulin for it. But the whole purpose of this the was fasting, type ones that we're doing this. Oh, I'm, wow, I'm shocked group. by that. It's out there. It's mm -hmm. out there. So, um, and uh, you know, in my mind, it just didn't make sense because it defies its purpose. For me, fasting would. I mean, the primary goal of fasting, whether you want to uh, lose weight or whether you want to achieve autophagy, keep inflammation down, um, to have, uh, you know, to repair your old or damaged cells, whatever you want to achieve at the end of it, you need to bring those insulin levels down. So if you're doing orange juice fasting, so you're drinking orange juice, maybe two large glasses, 
in a day, you're going to need to take insulin for this type ones. We know that, right? You can't get away with a whole glass of insulin. That's pure sugar, probably 40 grams of carbohydrates in there. So you're going to take insulin for it. So that kind of defies the purpose. And if you are going to take orange juice because you're having lows, hypos, it means that your insulin level is already too high. Your background insulin is too high. So it would make sense to cut your background insulin down. So either way, it just didn't make sense to me. So when I just tried to explain all of that and, and just question what the purpose would be, I mean, what does it achieve? I was told, oh, it's for electro maintain the electrolytes. And of course, I just, uh, you know, I knew from my own research, that electrolytes, I mean, most people for, for actually, you know, three to four day fast, most people only ever need salt. And that's exactly what was stated in actually uh, Dr. Fung's book as well. Had his book by then, and he just promotes salt. He says, unless you're doing a whole month or, you know, two week fast, which needs to be done under, you know, medical supervision in most cases, you're not going to, to have serious electrolytes sort of imbalance problems. All you need is salt, just pure sea salt, and that will uh, fix you, <laughs> but you're right. So anyway, so that group didn't seem to serve me well either so I decided okay I'm going to create a Facebook group I'm going to do this fasting and post in the group how I'm getting on um and and also write a blog about it on my website I already had a website because I was a coach like low carbohydrate coach uh, by then um I thought I'm just going to write a blog there as well publish the blog and just have that group out there and see if anyone will join and uh, soon enough, people started joining. <laughs> Initially, I thought if, even if one person joins the group, at least there would be someone out there I can share my results with. I can tell them that was the most awful mistake in my life or that was a, a liberating experience. You know, um, people started joining, actually, and not all of them are fasters, but at least they have interest and they're letting, you know, people's posts sort of sink in. They're absorbing the ideas. They're gaining confidence. And um, and it's wonderful to actually see the members because I communicate with a lot of the members outside the group as well, like in private. And it's, it's wonderful. I'm really proud to have over 200, uh, maybe 300 members in the group who are all at least interested. They're either fast, they're experienced fasters, beginners. But they, but but they, they're very much interested in in fasting for various different reasons. Yeah, I love your Facebook group, and you, you know, you you keep it very interesting with all the different topics you have, and you also post your YouTube videos, which are fascinating. So I definitely recommend that people find your group. It's Low Carb and Fasting, I believe, is the name of the group. Lowcarbonfasting.com is the Facebook page. Now the Facebook group for fasters and type ones who are on keto and fast, uh, fast uh, who are doing keto, sorry, who are doing keto and fasting is called Keto and Fasting with Type One Diabetes. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a great group, and uh, you know what's interesting about you is you know you most of my fasts are I, I'm a daily eater. I do um, one meal a day usually. And I've always been really curious about the extended fast. However, I'm at a point now where I've lost as much weight as I want to lose. And I feel like if I, you know, delve into the extended fast, I might go too low. <laughs> so I, I, I haven't really dabbled with that too much, but I am very curious to know a, a couple things. First, you're at a very good weight now. Do you do a lot of extended fast? And if you do, do you end up at a point where you feel like you've lost too much weight? And then secondly, maybe you can tell us you know, about some of these longer fasts, because I've seen you do hundred hour fasts, And I think that's just really incredible as a type one. I'm, I almost can't imagine doing it. So maybe you can talk about those two things. Okay. So, uh, oh, the hundred hour fast, uh, and the 90 hour fast were on the f first fast that I did. So I started off small, obviously like you, I started with one meal a day. And that basically means you're fasting for 23. Well, in fact, if your meal isn't lasting the whole hour, <laughs> so you're done with your meal within 30 minutes. So you're basically fasting the rest of the time. So you're fasting for a good 23 uh, and a half hours. That's significant sort of uh, fast, right? Um, we shouldn't undermine that. So fasting doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, over days and days or weeks. So I was already doing one meal a day. I was already confident about, you know, how to reduce my insulin. And one meal was working perfectly for me. Some, sometimes I think 
at the time I used to eat about 1 p.m. and that would be it. So one large meal. And so it, I was doing really well on that. So then I decided to fast one day. So it kind of, I started building up on it. So uh, the first fast I think I did was about 36 hours or 38 hours. And then the next one at 38 hours, I was feeling so well that I just wanted to carry on a little bit more and eat the next morning instead or fast through the night. Uh, sometimes the hours, you know, wouldn't. So when I decide to break the fast, I look at the time. Well, it's 11 p.m. Do I really want to? When have I ever eaten at 11 p.m.? So I might as well fast another eight hours and wait until the morning. So um, I gradually built up on, on the fast, but I didn't write any blogs on those. I, I thought the 90 hour fast was uh, deserving of a blog. So uh, I challenged myself. I wanted to fast for 90 hours. I didn't know if I would be able to, but. Uh, I was taking notes, like detailed notes, and uh, I was starting typing up my block as I as I go along, so I wouldn't forget anything. I was measuring my ketones and doing everything, and uh, you know, all I was doing is take salt, salt and water, and reducing my insulin, and uh, it went so well that the next extended fast that I did, or a long fast, was uh, uh, one hundred hours. Only because I thought, oh, I've already done the 90 hours. I know I can do it. I wonder if I can increase that by an hour, maybe even two or three. So, um, and I hit the 100 and I thought, okay, that's it. So I was salivating 100 hours. I was getting hungry. So I thought that, that's it. So 100 is the hour. I, I, I did, I never really planned to stop at a certain sort of hour of fasting and then because you have to listen into your body if I'm struggling if it's causing stress if it's raising my cortisol levels uh, which will then uh, increase my insulin needs then you know what have I achieved so it's not supposed to be punishment it's supposed to be a, a good feeling it's supposed to be a feeling of it's supposed to give you that sense of freedom and lightness and uh, mental sort of sharpness. You're supposed to feel energetic throughout the fast. You know, if if you're not feeling any of those, then then something isn't right. You're not ready for a long fast. So I knew with the second long fast, I wanted to break my record. I wanted to do more than 90 because 90 went really well. I didn't struggle with a 90 hour fast, but I didn't know how long I could go. However, 100 hours was, uh, I thought, okay, I'm stopping now. 100 hours, that's, you know, that's pretty good. So, <laughs> so I've written two blogs on fasting with type 1 diabetes. Um, I, I don't write blogs on the rest because they're just so sort of insignificant to me. 36 hours, 38 hours, it just comes and goes before you even know it.